Coming up on The Call Room, we're in Zurich and Brussels and sit down with six athletes who are chasing the diamond trophy. Stick two pretty big guys in a pretty small car and let them drive around Monaco. And we take a look at why the 400 meter hurdles have been such an exciting event to watch in 2018. Welcome everyone to The Call Room. My name's Michelle Samet. I'm here with Jasmine Sawyers, Christina Manning and Sharika Nelvis. And we're gonna have a little chat, ladies, aren't we? We are. We are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first thing that we noticed when we saw who was on this panel was that I said, well, you're a long jumper, you're two hurdlers, and then you guys instantly went, yeah, but we used to long jump as well. That's right. right. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. I started, I got started with track from long jump. Jasmine, speaking about the long jump, can you please um, just turn around and look at the following? What's with the faces? <laughs> <laughs> There's always a face. And the thing is, somebody always catches it too. That's not even, I don't even have an excuse. Normally I'm like, well, I'm mid-competition. I'm in the air. You Speaking can't. of, mid-competition. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult <laughs> to control oh, this thing. Oh, reply to people. Look. I know. Look at that. Look at caption this picture like you should let people caption this because you can't let people caption it themselves no i end no. up having to delete captions <laughs> you know, people on inappropriate yeah, that's true oh. it's a nostril flare and i was like you're smiling i'm like do you smile like that <laughs> <laughs> mm. <I think. laughs> no uh, see that's the closest thing to a normal looking face <laughs> and that's saying something Go on, I can see this in the tab, do it. <laughs> I just want you to know my long jump faces are way worse than this. They're okay. way worse. The same thing is, I see some of these girls. <laughs> but you know, that's how I was just going to say. I am how she is with her. Well, and that's in the hurdles, though, but in long jump. Like, all of us be having them ugly people. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> ugly, and we could just be like, I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> You know how it is, you're looking for photos to post. Mm -hmm. All the time. Come on, we all, everyone's doing it, we're all doing it. Oh. Scrolling on the images and it shows you what website the pictures come from, right? Mm -hmm. Every time, it's like yeah. it's from Getty, it's mm -hmm. from Zimbio, it's from wikifeet.com. <laughs> My hang on, what is this? So it's like a, it's a picture I posted, I don't know, a couple of years ago on one of those little hoverboard things in my friend's... Okay, uh, the little two-wheel thing? Yeah, yeah. in okay. my friend's back garden, and I'm barefoot, because, like, I, was, I don't know, I'm barefoot. <laughs> like a, sometimes you're barefoot. Yeah. Yeah. I click it, it's a collection of photos of me barefoot, and a rating out of five for my feet. Really? Yeah. I bet you're on there. Honestly, if there are any photos of you barefoot on the internet, nope, you're going to be my feet be on the feet. <laughs> I do not show my toes. <laughs> Out of interest, I, gave, I put a few of my friends in there, and they were there. There really? was somebody on the internet collecting athletes. I want a wiki, I want a wiki, feet, a wiki search. Right? It's, from a, it's from something I think I tweeted it oh, ages ago. Tweeted it. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Or I don't know if I even... Don't tweet your feet. Don't. Um, <laughs> right. There you go, a motto <laughs> for life. Don't tweet your feet. Don't tweet your feet. <laughs> but it's not like, you know what I mean? It's not a conscious, like, oh, let me put my feet out there. Yeah. It's just a photo, and they've gone through, clearly, systematically through the whole page, and been like, where are the photos of the feet? Really? I'm going to like Google a foot model and put it on my Instagram. <laughs> like, just get on my toes with it. By a lot of five. <laughs> All the comments like, wow, I never knew her feet were so beautiful. <laughs> Over in Zurich is my friend Thomas Byrne, who's sitting there with Luva Manyonga, George Ambeline, and Kimmy Williams. So, hi over there. Hey, y'all. Thank you, Michelle. We are here in Zurich for the first leg of the Diamond League Final 2018. This week, it's this baby. She's you want to touch it? Do you want to touch it? <laughs> no, I, I have it. You have one. Yeah. You have one. Yeah, I have one. I touch it for you, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be touching one tomorrow. Yeah. Okay? No. That, I don't need. That's, 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 that's but that's the other one is, is lonely, though. You know, like he needs uh, a partner. You know, so I have to go get mm -hmm. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all need a partner in life, yeah. don't we? We all yeah. need a partner. In life. Who is your partner in life, George Ann? Is my it Steven? cat, Maggie, <laughs> is my partner in life. <laughs> Tell me about Maggie, your cat. I, um, I found my cat um, at the track one day. Well, actually, a couple of the coaches on the distance team at University of Arizona 
found her. Um, she was just born, we're assuming the night before, because we had seen, you know, the mama cat. So we were like, okay. One of the guys took her in for the first week, and I told him, I was like, I really want that cat, I'll take her. So from a week on, I've had her for two years now, and you have to bottle feed her. I'm like, if this is what children is like, I need to, <laughs> to wait a very <laughs> long time, because I got no sleep. Um, yeah, it was, it was a struggle, but now she's great, and I love her. <laughs> My first two pets were cats, so I already did the cat story. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm a dog person. You're a dog person? <laughs> yes. Do you have any pets, Lufo? <laughs> <laughs> is it just the diamond trophy? I'm pretty sure you have a dog and a cat. No, I only have a dog. You have a dog? Um, a pit bull, but I'm not staying with him. Lufo's always on live, so when you go see your mom, <laughs> and you get your dog, go on live, go on live so we can see your dog. What do you mean, yeah. on live? On oh, Instagram, you always go live. You're always video. live? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. always live. Even yesterday when he was doing his shake-out, he, wants he the was people live. To yeah. know. I, I, I just love to, to like, like, engage with his fans. Engage with the people, yeah. like show them what I'm doing daily basis. You gotta reach out, let them know yeah. you're human. Yeah. 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 They put you up so high yeah. sometimes, yeah. I'm like, listen, <laughs> I make mistakes too. Sometimes I don't make the pit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. There, no, seriously, you seriously. Make the there are days when I get on the runway and I legit forget how to triple jump. Sounds weird, but... Sometimes yeah, the body don't yeah. work. Really? I'm serious. I think on the step, on the step, you do, like <laughs> you lose it. Like the leg just, the like, leg drops you. Yeah. <laughs> you and then what? you're looking at coach like I don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Yeah. I think, I think that real. happened throughout my whole childhood. <laughs> Every day was an off day. I'm still waiting for the Every the day spark. is an off day, yeah. 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 I'm still waiting for the spark. Was it, Kimberly, we were talking earlier about how you could probably be a heptathlete and possibly okay. even a decathlete. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Say that again. Say that again. Look what you just did. Look I know, what you right? just did. In my head, <laughs> I believe I could do multiple events. <laughs> well, I think you could do whatever you put your mind to. And um, I've never had the opportunity to try some of the other events, and I would really like to try it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd rather try and fail than sit down and, you know, never have the opportunity to do so. Yeah. In which um, I threw the discus once. Yeah. And the shot put. I did high <laughs> jump. And, One, of two. course, I did long jump. <laughs> okay, now what about the, the forward events are kind of weird What about the 800? We never ran that. <laughs> I mean, we run at 800 every time I warm up. I run do two laps. Oh, okay. <laughs> it ain't and fast, but... <laughs> <laughs> it ain't fast, but, you know, I run well, at 800. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Just uh, went like the last 10 yards just to Yeah, just run through the line and do that. You know we don't get to go to the line. So a lot of times I go to the finish line, I'll be like, you, that opportunity. you lean. Yeah. I'll be like, this is what it feels like to go through here. <laughs> Take it all in. I'll be waving too. <laughs> I'll be like, Whoo. This is the oh part gosh. of the show that I call the cup of mystery and questions of death. Oh. I knew you had something up your sleeve. Should I be nervous? It's not something. my sleeve. There's nothing up the sleeve. I knew you were planning something. Take a question. I was going past along the cup. Oh, yeah, so I go first. Yeah, you can start. Okay. Pick a question. Okay. Do I ask someone this question? I pick a person? No, it's for you. Oh, I don't, I don't know what's in there. Yes, someone you else, do. they've been sent in I don't from Monaco. You. We have no can idea. Can I put a question? Ah. <laughs> really? I hope this is <laughs> nothing <laughs> personal. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know what, I, I have no idea what's written on there. Oh. oh. I don't like the question. You don't like the question. That would have been good for fault. me. Because I remember Blame when. The cup. Blame because the I really don't have an answer. Do well, you want to read, read it? Read the question. It's who are you scared of? I'm not afraid. Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen. Stephen is with my agency and he scares me. Why does he scare you? For multiple reasons. <laughs> <laughs> movie characters. Oh, okay. Scary. It can be anyone. Which movie? Who? <laughs> I really. I'm sorry. I'm, see, I'm seeing Luva's question. <laughs> Wait, what is And this? he's okay. struggling. <laughs> you should take my question. You can take mine. That is real easy. You I can, can, I can you tell you, swap, like, you can swap. Oh, yeah, because I'm not scared. No, really yeah, said, you know. Really said, yeah. Here we go. No, no fears in life. You can't have fears. <laughs> Don't be scared of anyone. <laughs> you can't. New question. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, you go. Can I have another one? No, no you, no, you have this one. You have to read this one. Okay. Yeah. When did you last Feed cry? Me. When did you last cry? Yeah. <sighs> when? Wow. I cried in my room. Yeah, on Common Walk game. So yeah. that's the last time you cried? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Like, Before the competition? No, after the competition. <laughs> you know, like, I was feeling overwhelmed. Like, the blessings that I'm getting, like, from Tears where I'm coming from. Tears of joy. Like, to be this person I am today. But it's not always a dream, is it, traveling the world? Have you ever had any mishaps? With oh, definitely. Because I was... <laughs> speak to Tori Franklin. She's yeah. got, the third time this year, she's not got any luggage. She hasn't got any luggage. It's okay. Yeah, see, that's, like, the worst. Rebecca get lost on the... <laughs> Who's Rebecca? 
Rebecca is my luggage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she named her luggage. I did. I mean, <laughs> she got luggage. lost multiple times. And, um, you know, there's a lot of times I have, oh my gosh, it's so nice to travel. But whenever I travel from the U.S., something always happens. It's either I missed the flight or oh, I missed the flight sitting at the gate. Don't tell my agent. <laughs> Are you um, one time, what were you doing at the gate? That's so. It was an early morning flight. I think I went to the airport. I checked in. I sat at the gate, and I was awake, but I was sleeping. Does that make sense? Because when when the plane pulled away, the guy was like, "You know, I was calling you. I was like, I didn't hear anything." But he's like, "You're right here." I was sitting like right there. The plane left, and I was right there. I was the first one to check in. <laughs> this is why she don't put me. My, yeah, my agent. To check in, uh, my agent don't put me on no more early flights. You know, she know how to check up on me. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not fully awake. But um, I don't know if you know this, but I was on my way to London one year for the Diamond League, and a lady started acting crazy in first class. Um, she had too much to drink. She took some meds, and she tried to break the window. <gasps> and we, what? not we, the flight attendants and everybody that was supposed to control stuff couldn't contain her. I was three hours from London. Cause you know, it was an eight hour flight. So we were already five hours in. They turned back Whoa. and we, we, had to go to, <laughs> we had to go to Philly. I was so mad. And then when we got there, they were like, oh, the flood attendants can't take no more trips because um, they overdid their time. So then they have to rest. Yeah. yeah. So we, had to <laughs> we all need to rest. <laughs> yeah. um, it was so crazy. I had to stay in the airport and get on the first flight out the next morning. It, it was, yeah. Well, I can't wait to see what happens. I think you're all gonna win. Oh, we are. Appreciate you're, it. If you're all going to say you're going to win, I believe you. That's the plan. Two of us, we're going to win. We're going to be on that podium. How many shot putters can you fit in the back of a small car? We thought we'd answer that question on the Grand Prix track in Monaco, where Thomas Walsh and Daryl Hill squeezed into the back of a car and, well, we just let the cameras roll. Track time with two large humans in the back seat. This will be the fastest attempt in the history. Okay. One very muscly one. Let me know when we're ready to start. M1, just I'll go after the Bentley. Oh. Or the Rolls Royce, even. Well, this is a great start so far. We've gone so, the meter. If we hit the Rolls Royce, we get to take 30 seconds off our time. <laughs> <laughs> Any Rolls Royce. Any Rolls Royce you hit, you take 30 seconds off the time. Hey, is this red light meant to be working back here? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't touch the red light. So for the people out there that are asking questions why we feel like we've done this before, it's because we have. <laughs> <laughs> this is the trip. Well, I have to tell the people, you have to be honest with the people. Darrell touched the camera Tom, and turned the button off. Tom. What, what? As you see, the cam the camera's a lot closer to him because he to adjusted me. the camera, and now he hit the power button. So this is attempt number two. A little bit more? It's Trust positive me. because he had a lot of profane profane language in attempt number one. <laughs> so we're hoping that the you're the one that kept on the Aussie. I mean, I mean the, the person <laughs> from New, New Zealand can <laughs> clean it up a bit for attempt number two. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not foul with language at all. I have a potty mouth. Foul in language, I don't foul in bros. Tom Walsh. Never. <laughs> Never have I ever fouled a throw. <laughs> <laughs> Drop finger. Uh. How long is the. Uh, 
the F1 guy, I think it's like 3.3 kilometers, and the F1 guys do it in 1 minute 20. How fast are you going? 1 minute 15. <laughs> <laughs> I love this meeting and all of the Monogast. The gas? Monogast. What are they? I really hope he didn't lie to me about it. I, hope, I really hope he did. Monogast really happy happy being did. the name of the people from Monaco. That's definitely what it is. It's you know that for a fact. You can keep keep saying that. Hey, there's another Rolls Royce in front of us. Hit it for another 30 seconds off. <laughs> Yo, okay, this first Rolls Royce is kind of getting on my nerves. It's really sexy. It's a cream, creme. Uh, creme brulee. It's a creme brulee. Yeah. Rolls Royce. Mm. And it's driving very slow. Yeah, no consideration for anyone else. In case you were wondering, we're in a Rolls Royce as well. Yeah. A fast one. A fast <laughs> one. What a beautiful city, though. City? Country? So, Monte Carlo is the city. Is the city. Monaco is the country. <coughs> is that right? Think so. Yeah. Think so. Think so. What? So, so there's I, supposed to be at least <laughs> one informed human being in all vehicles. <laughs> we have zero. <laughs> Coming back up to the hotel. Ooh. All right, we're still on the clock. Put, go for it. Let's go. We're close to this record. Yeah. Punch it. Punch it. I felt very unsafe this whole time. It's okay, you gotta hold on for this last stretch. Oh! Uh, corners. Oh! <laughs> Jesus Christ, this curve is killing us. Ah! Uh, oh! Oh! Go, 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 go! <laughs> got it, got it! Ah! Uh, 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 Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. uh, I gotta come that way. No, I'm not going get, that way. Get a picture of the wheel coming up. Oh, look at that. Racing. I'm a, I'm a little bit messed up. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I'm ready to spin fast. Spin fast. Spin fast. Yeah. No, I'm spin fast. Time to spin fast. Ladies and gentlemen, spin fast. Be <laughs> reckless. Well, that was quite something. I'm glad we didn't have to be in that car with him. <laughs> Christina. Oh. You're getting married this year. Um, Have you turned into a bridezilla yet? Not yet. I don't. I don't think I'm going to turn into a bridezilla. I, I hope I don't turn into a bridezilla. But I, um, it's going to be in December, and Teresa's actually one of my bridesmaids. Have you seen Don't Tell the Bride? No. no I, from what it sounds like, no. <laughs> don't tell the bride. Don't tell about what. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think. I, mean, I thought maybe there was a US version, I guess not. It's not as bad as you think. So, uh, my man will tell me everything. everything. He's telling me everything. Okay, no, it's definitely not what you think. They, um, the show gives the, the whole budget for the wedding to the guy, but the girl can't have any control over what happens, so Never. he buys the dress, he plans the bachelorette party, Never. he plans the event, he does everything start to finish. And what I think that's more stressful than actually giving the bride the stuff to go to. Wait, what? No, no, I don't trust you, no. We've just had a perfect example there, although English is all of your native language, but there was clearly a bit of a language barrier there when you just said, don't tell the bride, uh, very British, oh, and yeah. you guys American. Mm -hmm. Jasmine's just moved to America recently. Yes. What's been uh, some of the challenges for you as a Brit? <laughs> Where are you? Uh, Claremont. Oh, oh, Florida. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a few things. You guys call some things things that are not what they are. A biscuit. Okay. You guys don't know what a biscuit is. You want to put gravy on biscuits. Biscuits go in tea. Cookies? 
only a cookie is a cookie. A cookie is a specific kind of biscuit. A cookie with that's like chocolate biscuit. chips in it, that's a cookie. <laughs> a digestive biscuit. What are you going to call a digestive biscuit if it's not a biscuit? A custard cream. A <laughs> bourbon. What are you calling these bourbon. things? I don't know. A jammy dodger. Okay, that sounds like a perk that might like, <laughs> <laughs> A jammy dodger. Down, you live down the street. Like. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, what I really feel like, I feel like Americans became rebellious after we separated and had our liberation. I feel like we just took things on purpose and like switched it up. Like, you know what I'm going to call this cookie a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> we said it got to be a biscuit, so I'm going to call it cookie. <laughs> like, that's what I just feel like happened. And then I don't understand how we talk, how do we talk so differently when we came from? I think we've, we've, we've learned a lot of differences there. Maybe we can work on that as the season progresses. One other thing, going back to something that you have in common, is actually you're all, all three of you, kind of into music, making Yay. music. Sharika, you're kind of pretending that this is not the case. You're putting your Freestyle Thursdays out there. Ah, Tell true. us about that. Huh? About what? <laughs> okay, so you know what? Since y'all would bring up music, we should all do a song together, okay? <laughs> like y'all should <laughs> sing. And I just give me a little verse in real quick, and we just find a beat. Like but yeah, that. so I do like a little freestyle Thursday. I try to do it every week. Sometimes it don't happen because I be doing other stuff. So <clears throat> I just, I don't know. One day I was just like, you know, I'm going to give somebody something different than just being, you know, me on the track. Now, yeah. Jasmine, you went about it in a slightly different way. Yeah. You went on The Voice. Yeah. To like, oh, it was a show like that. It was terrifying. Yeah. Like, it was scarier than jumping. Way worse. People are like, oh, yeah, but you're doing it in front of a big crowd. I was like, yes, but it's, it's so different. Yeah. Like, you can jump or you can run and there's a clock and it tells you how fast you went and everyone can say, okay, well, you were the fastest, so you went and you're good. Yeah. Whereas like, I get up there and I gave the performance what I thought of my life and, like, until the very last bar, nobody turned around. And I was like, oh, God, I was terrible. But I thought it was great. great. You know, I'm great. there like, I did so good. I loved it. And you're still getting, I mean, the judges, yeah, they're supposed to judge you, but you're still getting judged. Right. On what you thought was the best thing Ooh. you ever put out. Mm -mm, I can't do it. Mm. That's the ones where they, you said where they do turn around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I would go. So you're like, singing to the back of a chair. No, so. if they didn't turn around, I would like go around. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> did you hear that? Did I hear that? Did I hear what I heard? <laughs> I thought that was great. I know what song I would choose, okay. and it's Alicia Keys' "Falling" because I sound like I know how to sing. Like. <laughs> Please, please, let's hear this is the first part, and we can be, we gonna be your judges. Okay, I'll, I'll be turn around. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. <laughs> <coughs> I keep on. <laughs> Lemon and ginger pieces. Yeah. And honey. yeah, I'm singing that song. So one of the main events this season has been the men's 400 meter hurdles, which has been, of course, dominated by Carsten Moholm, uh, Abdurrahman Samba, and we got one of the other four hurdlers, Jack Green from the UK, to tell us a bit more about the technique and actually why it's been such an event this year. at Paris Diamond League this year when uh, Mr. Samba ran his ridiculous time, quite frankly. See, what's amazing about with, with Karen Clement, we're talking about these guys running 47, 6 and below. And you look at, at Clement, Bashawn Jackson, who's also in this race, at the time had Angelo Taylor, and these guys all run 47, 2, 47 low. So it's not something we haven't seen before, but to have this group of guys right now is quite exciting. So what you're reinforcing here, well, what I do, maybe some other people are different, I'm thinking about my whole stride pattern because you've got a whole game plan. And 
just before you've um, you go into your blocks and so on, you've probably done a run to hurdle one, hurdle two, and you've sussed out what the conditions are like because it'll be your first time you've gone in the stadium on that day, so uh, it could be completely different to what you're expecting and that might manipulate what stride pattern you want to do. But someone like Samba and McMaster, Warholm, they're all going to be, be running that 13 strides from the off. There's not going to be any, any difference on that. The, the decision is how hard you then run a 13. So you see McMaster in, in this race in Paris just went out hard. Uh, bearing in mind Samba goes and runs at a ridiculous time here and, and McMaster's touching down first at four and at five. He's already up on Warholm and Warholm is obviously notorious. So you see we're coming into hurdle seven here and, and Samba's really made his move but into seven and then to eight is where he's added in a stride. Now the top bend between 200 and 300 typically is where most people change their stride pattern so you'll be going from 13 strides down to 14s maybe or your 14 strides to 15s depending on who you are and that happens just because you've got fatigue 400 meters is hard you're, you're getting around there you're not going to be maintaining the same speed that you originally had so you're coming into that top bend and you're thinking, where am I gonna change? There might be wind conditions or so on. But as a, a rival athlete, you might be thinking, if I can put pressure on someone that I know will be changing at hurdle six, hurdle seven, hurdle eight, if I can put pressure on them there, can I force them into a mistake? Now that wouldn't be your main focus because you can't control someone else. But could I maybe manipulate a situation? So I know that when I'm trying to overthink maybe a little bit about now I need to change my, my hurdle into, into hurdle seven, I need to change down into 14. But I'm also, I've got people around me, I'm in the race and my brain's going, no, just go, go and race now. It's really hard to keep that focus. So that is a way of applying pressure so on. Some people might do it. Um, I'm not someone that's particularly in that position because I tend to come from further back, but you know, you're looking at these guys going out really hard. They're applying a lot of pressure to each other that they wouldn't have normally had outside of that core four that you're going to have in the 400 hurdles now. Outside of that, there isn't anyone challenging them at hurdle eight, hurdle nine. They're getting a pretty much a free run. But against each other, it's a whole different scenario because there is that pressure of, oh, hold on, I'm not used to having someone here and there is now. And that's hard, but they'll only get better and better at that anyway the more that they race. And what's really exciting about 400 hurdles at the moment is the top guys are racing each other all the time. Um, and hopefully that continues. It's how he takes nine and comes off that, really accelerates forward. What's really impressive with Samba is just the fact that the guy is so strong. You see McMaster runs 47.5 there, which any other season in, in recent history, you run 47.5, you're, you're number one in the world, you're winning Olympics, you're winning world championships. Carsten, what was impressive with Carsten there is he absolutely smashed hurdle nine and still ran a 48-0. At hurdle nine, just watch how aggressive Samba goes in it, but it's how the momentum carries off the hurdle and the amount of time he gains on the field just off this one hurdle. And that's that strength, being able to hurdle under fatigue, uh, which obviously is really key in 400 hurdles because it's a hard event. 400 metres is hard enough, let alone when you have the plyometric side to it, that hurdling element, um, which takes a lot out of the body. So to be able to hurdle at that speed, under that fatigue, and still be moving as, as fast as he is, is, is incredible. And he's obviously very happy about it. <laughs> but I would be very happy. Give me a 46. I'll take a, a 48 low at the moment, let alone a 46. So in this first 200, you know, some people are gonna go harder than others. Now you've gotta go fast to a degree, right? But everyone's slightly different. So some people will finish stronger than others and some have to go out hard to make their race work. Someone like myself goes out slow typically um, and then but I build through it whereas someone like Carsten is a 100 miles an hour I'm going 
um, and I'm going to keep going. And it's, you know, I have so much admiration for that because that that style of running is, it's a, I'm given a hundred percent. It's really vulnerable. It's exposing yourself. It's a, it's something you don't see too often. I don't think. I think it's, you almost, most athletes probably fear doing that just in case. Well, if I go too hard, what will happen to me at the end? These guys aren't thinking about the negative side of it. They're thinking, right, if I really commit over this first two, I put the pressure on, on these other athletes. What can I achieve in a positive way? Not, oh, well, I might be tired and I might hit a hurdle. And they're getting the results as well. And I think you're looking at these times, you're looking at the 46.98 that we just seen. Um, and I think the event's gonna start changing in terms of those athletes that come into it. So I think you're gonna be in a position where you have to run 44 seconds to compete with these guys over the flat 400. So I think you're gonna, you're gonna see a lot of 400 runners coming over if, if, you know, they might think that, right, my, my maximum of 400 might be 44 high, but I have this, I have a natural knack for some hurdling. It's something that fits my, my physique, whatever it might be. I'm gonna give hurdling a go. Because you're not, to run 48, you can get away with maybe being a little slower than 44, but to start running these times of 46, 98, 47, one, two, three, four, anything under 47, five, you've gotta be running seriously fast on the flat. We saw that with Samba in, in the London Diamond League this year when he decided to go and do the four. And, he competed with the best in the world over 400 and around 44 seconds. The differential that you, you're kind of aiming for as a good 400 meter hurdler is, is two and a half seconds between your 400 and your 400 hurdles. Now obviously that, that changes, it's not, that's not a given, it has to be two, two and a half. Some of the best 400 hurdlers don't have that differential. Look, you've got flight time when you're hurdling, uh, so that, that takes away your, your speed and also, you're constrained in a 400 hurdles. You've got 35 meters between each hurdle. Now, in 35 meters, you have a lot to think about. You've got a stride pattern. You're thinking about, right, what happened on the previous hurdle that will now decide what I do into the next, how are the conditions. There's a lot to think about and you're controlling it. It's like a sprint hurdler only has those three strides to really decide, uh, you know, to control that speed. If you run flat out, you're gonna end up wearing hurdles. If you go out there and you're not thinking, so you're constrained. It's a, yes, I'm running fast, but it's a controlled fast running. Well, that was fascinating. I'm glad we've got the final still to come. I don't know who you've got your money on, but I'm still undecided. When you go and compete and when you stand on the track, you're standing there, you're wearing like briefs, crop top, got cameras on you. How do you not get nervous then? You know, if I go out there and I run a bad time, I feel like that's on me, like, oh, shoot, I, I messed up you know, versus me going out there singing, feeling like I can sing, you know, Something and then everybody wrote. Like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, ooh. am I terrible? You know, get her off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Especially when, when you got a performance that you wrote yourself, it's so oh, yeah. personal. It's like, if you don't like this, it's like you don't like me. Yeah. You know, yeah. whereas if I don't jump well, it's like, okay, I can take that. And I don't know, the nerves are different. I only really get nerves for long jump in the cool room. And then when oh, I walk, oh. you know, the core room's kind of, yeah. it's, it's this intense, everyone's yeah, right there, it's... Yeah. It's kind of funny that you're currently in the core room. In the core room. How <laughs> 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 oh, are your nerves, Justin? <laughs> yeah, my heart's going, but we're coping. <laughs> By the time you get out there, it's like, all these people came to see me. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey, yes, I will perform <laughs> for you. <laughs> Don't you worry. Because it's, this, it's like, this is my arena, I know what to do here. Exactly. I'm comfortable here. You know, you say you're sort of in your like, the little briefs and crop top, but it's like, this is my costume. Mm -hmm. This is what I do here. And there's a confidence that comes with that, I think. Yeah, I think the only thing with the brief thing is like, I hate for my thighs to touch. Mm. And like, <laughs> they always touch. So I have to like, have to go <laughs> state girl walk because I'm like trying to like, not have them scrub against each other. Like, it hurts. So I have to be like, oh, I'm walking all state. <laughs> so it's like, that's the only thing. Like, but I like my little briefs. I be looking thick. <laughs> I think the only thing that I can leave uh, to say is good luck. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. so much. We're here to compete. You forgot that you had to compete. Yeah, right? yeah we're here to compete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, good luck.
enjoy yourselves out there. Thanks. Right. Thank and you for having us. Yeah. This was really fun. Very, nice. very fun.